Hey YouTube land, welcome back to another action figure review. Now today I'm continuing to do more Masters of the Universe figures, or well, He-Man. Now, I haven't done any Masterverse figures in a while. I kind of got backlogged with all the figures that came out, and I never got around to doing any reviews of them. But this one is one I'm excited for because I really, uh, when I was growing up, this is one of the few figures I had as a kid. And unfortunately, I don't have my original. I only ever had two brand new He-Man figures from the 90s. And that was this guy who is called Slushhead. And his one of his mutant, space mutant companions called Optic. Now, I have the classics versions of these. Which I'll bring in the classic version of Slushhead to show in comparison. But... Uh, this guy was a really cool looking figure. He had a bit of gimmick. He doesn't have this gimmick in this form, but the classics one does, and I'll kind of point that out when I get around to it. But in the show, he kind of like he was underwater because the whole idea was this bowl on top of his head or the dome on top of his head was filled with liquid because he was like a amphibious character that actually was able to walk around because he had this apparatus on him that helped him to do that. Now, the team at Mattel have kind of redesigned him. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly bring in the box for this guy. So he's part of the Masterverse line. He's not part of the new Eternia wave. He's just basic Masterverse, but he has the new adventures of He-Man logo. So back in the nineties, for those of us who were old enough to remember when the original He-Man series or Masters of the Universe line waned and basically got cancelled, they tried to reinvent it in the 90s with the new adventures of He-Man. And it basically takes place, I think it's 10,000 or 1,000 years after the events of the current of that 80s cartoon where He-Man, both He-Man and Skeletor get sent into the far, far future and they basically have, they continue their battle and Skeletor becomes allies with Flog, who is the leader of the Space Mutants and these are part of his crew. So Slushhead is one of his um, henchmen. He technically, he works for Flog more than he works for Skeletor. Unfortunately, I did manage to miss out on the new adventures. They have done three figures in new adventures so far for this line and i really hope that we get more uh slush head being one of them you can see this is nordor in the background which is a it was originally a playset and uh, the base for the spa evil space mutants in the cartoon and there was a playset in the toy line uh the new this new version of slush head is a bit different to his original counterpart but we'll get into that in a second but the other two figures they have done in the wave or in the in the line so far that includes new He-Man stuff or the new adventures of He-Man is New Adventures of He New Adventures He-Man himself, or otherwise known as Galactic Protector He-Man. And then there is the New Adventures Skeletor, which only just recently got released at the time of this recording, so he's one I haven't picked up. I did miss out on the New Adventures He-Man, which I trying to get, because he's actually I've always liked that design, even though it is quite different to his original look. He's actually wearing pants, which is different. So we'll bring in this guy and all his attributes and accoutrements. So I'm going to take off the gear that he comes with. Now, I will point out that the head that's in the dome is not the one that comes with him defaulted. The head that comes with it, the default head is this bloated looking one. I'm not a big fan of it, which is why I swapped it out. But swapping it in and out is a little bit daring. So I'm going to leave it off for the time being. I'm not going to swap it out. But I will show what you can do with the extra head on this guy. So he comes with quite a lot of bits. So, uh, I'll just take all these accessories apart. So he comes with four of these tentacles. Now they're not bendy or anything. They're fixed in the pose there. They do have a hinge on each of them. And uh, there's nothing on the claws or anything like that. So they are fixed in the poses that they are in. He comes with his traditional backpack. He comes with his laser gun slash axe weapon. Which 
I I don't ever remember him using it as an axe in the show. I always remember him using it as a laser gun. I could be wrong. He comes with an extra couple of sets of hands. So he comes with two punchy fists. So on the figure, you get the two default hands, which are the grasp hands for the weapons. And then you get these two webbed, outstretched hands. Now, if these look familiar, I'm going to bring this guy in. He does share parts with Merman. So these are the same hands that Merman came in with. The feet are the same as Merman's. And in fact, the feet from Merman and him are also the same ones that were used on Skeletor. So you have some cross compatibility across the board with parts or parts sharing, I suppose. His legs are uniquely sculpted. His torso looks to be that of a standard, one of the standard books. So it's just done in the green skin, that slimy green that his skin is in. And then his arms are unique. So the upper bicep arm and the elbow are kind of standard looking. But his lower elbow to his hands have this kind of wrinkled arm or kind of scaliness to it. And then the same with his shoulders. And then his, head, his heads are unique. So he does have that. He also comes with this weird contraption, which he never had before. This is a new way of adding the arms to him, and it also gives a couple of different options. So, there's this thing that pops out. It has this weird purpley slime looking thing that's inside here. I don't know if it's from an episode. I don't remember this thing in any of the episodes. But the idea behind this is you can take his alternate head, put it onto this, and then you take his little arms, and you just plug them in. Uh, make sure I get the right way. Plug them into this thing. And then you can make some weird, almost Doc Ock sort of Mr. Animated series. There are new adventures of He-Man, or um, new adventures of, of Batman animated uh, Mr. Freeze sort of walker thing, which is kind of cool. The interesting thing about this is, and I pointed it out to a couple of people, in the promo pictures for this, they actually show a dome on top of this like this, but the dome they show is the one off the main body, and they show this thing up here on the body of this. Now, from what I can see, and there's, I'm not sure if you can see it here, that dome is actually glued in place up here. So there's, it's not coming out and there's no way of popping it off this to put it over this. So it must have been changed from prototype. Because if you look at prototype images or the kind of the stock images of this guy online, he has that dome over this head. So it has like that kind of more complete uh, Mr. Freeze Walker thing going on, which is interesting, but he doesn't have that on, on the figure. So he comes with his default claws, which I'm going to pop these all off and pop this thing, his head off that ball joint and then put this thing back together. So the way they show him assembled on the back of the box is they show this thing plugged in here and then all the arms attached onto that. So that is kind of a new way of doing it. He has this like, extra power pack, I suppose you want to call it. So there is a couple of options on this guy. Now, just before I do go through some of the other options, I am going to do a comparison sign just for the sole purpose that you can see which claws are his default ones. So this is the one, this is the, it's a bit dusty. Uh, this is the classics version of Slush Head. And as you can see, he has those that bigger, kind of grabby claw this one is actually articulated and then he has the grab uh, the kind of p other pincher so he has the two pinchers which are this, this one and this one and as you can see this is articulated on this version he still retains that same axe gun weapon he has kind of a he does again share repart parts like those are skeletal legs these i think were buzz off's legs so he shares a lot of parts from other classics figures. But um, the gimmick with this one is this dome. If you took this piece off the body, this whole headpiece is actually part of the armor. 
because the idea was you could fill this with water and you could recreate that slush head look. You can even see that the head that's in here is the slightly more larger one compared to the slimmer one that you have in the figure. But you can see these are roughly around the same size. In fact, if I bring in the tape measure, this guy will stand a little taller because he's the newer one. So he's about seven and a half with the dome. He's just around the seven, but like those arms to bring him way up into the nine, nine inch scale, depending on how he's done. And as you can see, if I just flip him around, you can see that backpack, which is supposed to be this one. It's a lot flatter on this. And there are, there's just the two arms that stick out at the side. Whereas the new one doesn't have that option. He has four arm options. So you can actually really create a dock ock if you want. So I'm just gonna put him together in his kind of default configuration so that's the way it's supposed to go this plugs into his back so you have the default kind of look to him and then if you want to spruce things up a bit more you can take these there's extra plug holes for this we'll get into his articulation in a bit as well because I haven't even touched on that so you got extra arms so you can really create that kind of weird ock ock and if you want to, I know it's a bit weird to do, you take this off, plug this thing in, and then you can plug those arms. It's going to make them really back heavy. But you can plug in those extra arms into that. So he has like a super, super backpack. Just move his legs so he's a little bit less inclined to fall over, but he will do because this thing is like super heavy on his back. But uh, yeah, you get the idea. He can have like a lot of configurations with his backpack. So I'm gonna pop off this extra one, leave it off to the side, and we'll go through. Actually, I'm gonna pop it off his backpack itself, just to make it easier for articulation. So he is kind of the standard Masters of the Universe, Masterverse articulation. So his arm will rotate all the way around, can raise up that much. He has a bicep swivel dual joint the elbows, swivel in the wrist and a hinge on the wrist, depending on which wrist you have in. Well, they all have the same actual hinge. It's just depending on which hand you have, you can kind of do different poses. Uh, he has torso articulation. He has a waist swivel. He has a diaphragm swivel. So if you want to take the armor off, he does have a ball jointed head. But in order to actually utilize it, you actually have to take the armor off. So there's these two clasps here that hold the armor in place. Once you have that off, you just slip the whole thing off and then you can pose the head which way you want. I have him kind of looking off to the side. His feet can go before that much. Legs can do splits that much. Can't really kick back because of this solid piece. He does have dual jointed knees. He does have boot swivel. And then he has these rocker ankle joints and forward and back on the foot which are on a ratchet joint and are very tight and then he has two peg holes on the bottom of his feet so all in all he is a really cool figure now i picked this guy up from a buddy of mine who happened to be getting them in he was getting a couple of them so i opted to get grab him off him as well uh, let me just readjust my light there a second it's gone a little bit darker. That's a bit better. You might be able to see things a bit better. Oh, all in all, he's really cool. He does hold his weapon quite nicely in his hand as a blaster, if you want. So the reason I have him with the heads kind of slightly to the side is because I was doing some two-handed poses with him, where he's just holding the blaster like that. But if you want to, because of the way he's designed and the way the weapon looks, you can have him holding it as an axe as well. So it is a kind of uniquely interesting designed um, figure. He is pretty cool. And I'm going to just throw his backpack on. So there is articulation points on those claw arms as well. As I said, there's no articulation on the tops of them. But just by where they connect on, you can swivel them. And there is hinges as well. So you can pose each one of them like that. But all in all, his claws are a good bit smaller than the Classics version, which is a little shame because I love how long the Classics version is. Like, they really reach really tall. But he does take up a bit of shelf space if you have all these bits and bobs on him. And just for a size comparison, because I have him handy, 
and he used classics but so hopefully we will see him in this figure or in this lineup we'll bring in his commander vlog this is the like even even if you have the classics version he doesn't look too bad with him so that is vlog the classics version of vlog that goes uh that's leader of the space mutants so it's this guy's boss and then because i had him earlier on we'll bring in the classics version again so you can see like what they really do with master verse is they really slimline the bodies made them a bit more human proportions compared to the over bulky bodies they're still the same kind of figures that classics were they still retain a lot of detail with a lot of paint apps that classics did but the main difference is you have a more slimmer like the body buck on these are a little bit slimmer and we'll bring in black adam here just so you can see size comparison with other seven inch scale figures because these are all done for seven inch scale so you want some sort of crossover so you could get away with it that way but all in all he's a really good figure do recommend grabbing one if you can get him as far as i'm aware he is a i'm, going, I'm probably butchering this it's either target or walmart exclusive all the new adventure figures so far i believe are all store exclusives which is a shame because i love the new adventures line uh i picked up nearly everything new adventures uh, from classics I have the New Adventure Skeletor, which I don't have at hand from Classics. I have nearly all the Space Mutants except for Quake. He's the only one I never got around to because he was the last line of stuff from Super 7. But um, I did pick up the others that they've made. So I do recommend getting Slush Head if you're a fan of the... Well, I will say, even if you're not a Masters of the Universe fan and you're like... A, just a fan of like space mutants in general he does make a good kind of villain character for stuff like you know you could almost even customize him and turn him into a decent looking mr freeze for a batman to fight if you were to repaint him and customizing him otherwise he's good as law as slush head as he's intended and if you're a fan of the space mutants line i would recommend picking him up because i think the more they sell the more they'll try and churn out more of the new adventures figures which i would love to see a full complement of all the space mutants that they had because there were some weird really weird wacky designs that never even got made in classics i'd love to see get make in made in the masterverse line so a good figure i do recommend getting him again though if you're not a fan of new adventures you can easily pass on them because i know New Adventures is kind of a niche market in the sense that a lot of the diehard fans didn't weren't on board with it because it deviated so much from the original character, well, not character designs, but the original storyline and a lot of the fun characters that people loved, like Ram Man, Mechanic, Trap Jaw, all those kind of cool villain and hero characters that were in the original line were literally erased out of existence so they could just have he-man and skeletor fight on so i know some of them kind of came in in the cartoon but there were no figures of those so all in all not a bad figure and i'm going to wrap this up here and stop waffling and as i said say i hope you have a nice day after watching this video i hope you enjoyed watching it and as always please feel free to like comment and subscribe to my channel and have a good one cheers guys